have completed four chapters till now and we have learned most of the basic things about pure devotional service so we'll be continuing further from where we left so first of all let us offer our obeisances to the shad goswamis because in the absence of their mercy the kind of work which they did you would not have got most of this knowledge at all so we are eternally indebted to them nana shastra vicharnika nipano sadharma sansthapako loka nam hitkarino ragu yuge मान्यो शरण्याकरौ राधा कृष्ण पदारविंद वचनानंदेन मत्तालिकौ वन्दे रूप सनातनौ रघुयुगौ श्री जीव गोपालकौ आई ऑफर माय रिस्पेक्टफुल ओबेसेंसेस अनटू द सिक्स गोस्वामीज नेमली श्री रूप गोस्वामी श्री सनातन गोस्वामी श्री रघुनाथ भट गोस्वामी श्री रघुनाथ दास गोस्वामी Sri Jeeva Goswami and Sri Gopal Bhatt Goswami, who are very expert in scrutinizingly studying all the revealed scriptures with the aim of establishing eternal religious principles for the benefit of all human beings. Thus, they are honored all over the three worlds, and they are worth taking shelter of because they are absorbed in the mood of the gopis and are engaged in the transcendental loving service of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. So, the summary till now. these two important shlokas which we have to remember for our lifetime anya vilashita shunyam jnana karma adi anavritam anukulena krishna anushilanam bhakti ruttama and the second shloka sarva padi vinirvuktam tat paratvena nirmalam rishikena rishikesha sevanam bhakti rujyate so important aspect from this are that the devotional service has to be devoid of all other desires it has to be favorable to krishna it has to be cultivated by following the footsteps of the acharyas it should not be covered by any karma and jnana kand second aspect it has to be free from all material designations we have to take krishna as the highest object we have to consider doing service and it has to be faultless so characteristics of pure devotional service it is kleshagni gives relief from material distress shubhada it bestows all auspiciousness moksha lagukrat it derives happiness of liberation sudurlabha difficult and rare to achieve chandranand visheshatma brings incalculable transcendental pleasure and it is krishna akarshini that means it is the only means to attract krishna the three categories of pure devotional service sadhana bhakti bhava bhakti and prema bhakti so we have to move slowly from sadhana to bhava to prema bhakti the eligibility of who can do the devotional service is one who has got the mercy of beauty one who is not overly attached to anything neither is he overly detached to anything the other two aspects which we have learned is about faith and knowledge faith means conviction that the conclusion of the scriptures are correct and what is the ultimate conclusion sarva dharma an parityajya mam ekam sharanam vraja and knowledge means understanding why this conclusion is correct so the more our intellect is convinced in this way the stronger will be our attraction and conviction to engage in devotional service so three types of devotees the uttama adhikari the madhyam adhikari and the kanishta adhikari so we are striving to become karishta adhikari and then slowly and steadily by following the do's and don'ts we may expect to move slowly and become uttam adhikari and one day have krishna attracted by our devotional service then in chapter 4 we understood the topics of how those who are eligible for pure devotional service reject the material desires and liberation that is bhukti and mukti and we also saw the shastrik evidence says how those in vrindavan reject the desire for liberation also even liberation to vaikuntha the reason being the higher test a pure devotee can abandon all these things 
it implies that the pleasure obtained from devotional service surpasses the pleasure of liberation and sense gratification so we also understood the five kinds of liberations which we studied and then we came to the conclusion that we do not want any of those five uh, liberations so now we continue our discussions with chapter 4 so as you can see the nomenclature of the chapter 4 is the purity of devotional service so what it means is we are going to be understanding today how devotional service is pure now one aspect which will be proven by the end of our discussion today is that pure devotional service is self sufficient perfectly and it is independent so it does not need to get involved with anyone on its own of its own the moment we start the bhakti independently automatically purity comes in it oh, prabhu ji this is what you are saying is there any shastrik evidence to it yes and that is what this uh, chapter 5 is all about please forgive the uh, name which i have been taking so let us see what are the shastrik evidences so first let us understand the significance of this particular title of the chapter itself so what we see here is purity of devotional service now if you see the webster's dictionary pure is defined as free from adulterating or extraneous matter see what is pure so if something is not contaminated something is not adulterated something is not having anything else in it then it is pure and see what bhakti is pure devotional service it's perfect on its own so indirectly what it means is it is pure in the sense that it does not need to be mixed with anything else we don't need any kind of a ritual to be done we don't need any kind of a tapa to be done any kind of a vrata to be done any kind of a yagya to be done any sacrifices to be done the moment we do bhakti on its own it can give us the result so it does not require mixing with anything and so in that sense it is pure it is complete in and of itself and that is why the uh, the title of this chapter 5 was the purity of devotional service so what are we going to understand in this chapter 5 so let us first see what we are going to understand first is chapter 3 and 4 till now have explained and illustrated with examples who are eligible to do pure devotional service So we have come to the conclusion that pure devotional service is not at all stringent. It is very easy to be done. Anyone and everyone can do it. What is required is that we simply need to have the attraction to serve the Lord without any motives. Anya bilashita shunyam. So the moment we don't have any kind of a motive, then we become eligible. So we have come to this conclusion. So, but if you see any other practices. what does it say that if you have to go for any kind of a self realization we must have qualification so what qualifications are generally asked for by the philosophers that you should be from a pious birth you should do prashchita rituals you should do varna ashrama dharma execution so all these three things are expected to be done but don't worry this chapter is going to prove that bhakti is not dependent on any of these three things neither on pious birth neither any requirements of prashchita rituals neither even execution of the varnashrama dharma it is independent and self sufficient and hence it is pure so that is what is going to be proven so let us take one by one so when we say that the devotional service has independence of pious birth what does it mean prabhu ji i am not born in a brahmana family or i am not from a, a category where i can do any kind of a rituals i don't know how to pronounce the sanskrit itself i cannot learn sanskrit so will i not be able to do pure devotional service don't worry 
Prabhupada Ji has explained from all the Shastras that to do devotional service, we don't require any of these things. We don't require to have a birth in a high family. And that is why it is free, independent of pious birth. And he has proven it. So let us see how it is being proven. So it says that we should not have to wait to take pious birth before we can perfect the pure devotional service. Because actually it's contradictory. If we do devotional service, then automatically we become pious. So see, we don't need to be born in a pious family to do devotional service. If we do devotional service, the family becomes pious. That is first and most important aspect. Second, Bhakti Yoga is very powerful. It is the most powerful thing which can ever happen. So the moment you start Bhakti Yoga practice, you have 100% of the war with Maya. Because finally we are here having a war with Maya. A constant war is going on wherein Maya wants to keep us trapped and we want to get away from her and go back to Krishna and enjoy Krishna's accompanishments. We want to serve him permanently. So, the moment we go on this Bhakti Yoga path, we have 100% of it. And it's not that something which I am saying or the Acharya saying. There are Shastric evidences for it. So, which are those Shastric evidences? Let us take Srimad Bhagavatam. If you see Srimad Bhagavatam first canto, second chapter, sixth verse, there it is clearly mentioned, devotional service is transcendental and has no cause. Devotional service is executed without any hope for gain and it cannot be checked by any material circumstances. It is open for all without any distinction and it is the constitutional occupation of the living entity. Just see. It is transcendental. It is causeless. Just like Krishna is causeless. He is Anadi. He is Ananta. He is Ajanma. And because he is Anadi, he is Anjanma. Anything associated with him is also like that. Transcendental. So, we can do service without any expectations to get any kind of gain. And that is why any material problems, circumstances, benefits, losses, they do not affect Bhakti. And it is open for everyone. Anyone can do it. It does not say nowhere in the scripture that you come this way, you do this way, then you will do it. No. It is open for everyone. There is no distinction. Even Krishna says, I do not make any distinctions between my devotees and anyone else. So, this is it. Bhakti is there in everyone's heart. And it is the constitutional occupation of the living entities. That is our only objective. That is only our reality. That we are devotees of Lord Krishna. And this is clearly proven in this Bhagavatam Canto 1, second chapter. Further, Sri uh, Saraswati Thakur, he has also given us an instruction. Now, he was a very powerful Acharya of Vaishnava Sampradaya. And he fought with all the other Acharyas, with all the other uh, uh, Sampradayas of his time to prove that Bhakti is open to everyone regardless of that. It's documented in the history. Secondly, Padma Puran also states that everyone, whether high born or low born, has the right to execute devotional service. Just as he has a right to take bath in uh, early morning in Magha. So in winter, generally in the month of Magha, it is said that anyone who takes early morning bath in river with cold water, he gets a lot of pain. But again, Padma Puran does not say that only those born of a high family in a Brahmana family can do it. No. Anyone can do it, and that is what Padma Puran says. Even if you are low born, even if you are Shudra, even if you are from the dog, Malekcha, then also you can do this and you can get the benefit of that piety, and your piety can increase. Then 
we come across the qualification being that we only need to have an attraction in skanda puran in kashi khanda portion it is said there was a country called as mayur dhwaja basically now mayur dhwaja was a place where only the low caste people used to stay and they were considered even lower than the shudras but then because they started taking up to devotional service they were initiated into the vaishnava cult and the moment they got initiated they started dressing like proper devotees proper dressing applying tilak on the body having beads in the hands and the neck and they they simply started becoming the moment they started following the principles they became more and more exalted so it seems like they used that coming from vaikuntha so this was so beautiful Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Apologies, there was a breakdown with the connectivity. Yes, good. Yes, Mat. Yes, Mataji. Apologies, the internet connection had got. So this is something which is documented in the Skanda Purana. So we have these evidences. Now it's not only this. There's one more place where it is documented. If you see Hari Bhakti Vilas, there also it is documented of how you don't require to be from a big family to get the benefit of. bhakti so what does hari bhakti vilas says and hari bhakti vilas is basically a vaishnava guy so it is stated that any person who is initiated into a vaishnava family certainly becomes a brahmana it is just like a kaunsa metal bell metal it gets turned into gold by mixing with mercury so it's a chemical reaction so if you mix mercury with kaunsa then it becomes gold so similarly any person who gets initiated into a vaishnava cult parampara becomes a vaishnava becomes a brahmana as well. so that is where it is very important to remember and it does not end here the bhakti does not require anything the it's only the spiritual master whose orders we have to carry out so if you are able to find a bona fide spiritual master and under his guidance and authority you start practicing then anyone can turn to this parampara and he becomes the topmost position of a brahmana brahman janati iti brahmana not that i have to be get, getting a birth in a brahmana family so this is how you don't require any kind of dependence on a birth similarly if you have to progress in spiritual consciousness it is said that there are three processes and amongst that bhakti is the best process now let us see how it is possible so if you see what are the three processes the three processes are one karma second is jnana and third is So, if you do any kind of a rituals, then it is the karma process. If you do, just think about this philosophy, that philosophy, concoctions of any kind, then it is jnana. But one who has taken to bhakti, that is devotional service to Lord, we don't have to do anything with karma and jnana, because it is without any tinge of karma and jnana. That is what we have said. अल्टीमेट ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ कृष्ण प्रेम गोइंग बैक टू गोलोक वृंदावन कैन बी अचीव 
नायदर बाय कर्मकांड नायदर बाय ज्ञान कांड ओनली बाय भक्ति मार्ग एंड दिस इज इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ एनी काइंड ऑफ रिचुअल दैट इज ऑल्सो क्लियरली एक्सप्लेन सो इट इज सेट दैट एट टाइम्स इट मे हैपन दैट वी we get plagued by sinful reactions and we may simply have certain difficulties so it is said that if you make any mistakes you should do certain practice because otherwise your karma will be there that karma will get documented and you will have karma for but devotional service does not require this it itself is most powerful means to eradicate sinful reactions so we don't require any kind of purification methods so we don't need to be pure to take devotional service we become purified by taking devotional service but still it is said that it is a possibility that a devotee may have a fall down so what happens then if by chance a devotee becomes involved in impure activities he has to just rectify himself nothing more that's it just rectify whatever mistake he has done whatever sinful activity he has done he just stops it immediately at that see other places they would say you have to do this ritual that ritual oh you are not pure you have to have bath in cold water for four days then you have to wash your head then only you can touch god no with bhakti you don't require any such kind of rules and regulations because bhakti itself gives purification directly so if you are making any mistake it is a mistake if done unknowingly then you just simply seek forgiveness what you have to do is you it take up your devotional principles again strictly and there is no other means of purification so accept the mistake seek forgiveness pray to your lord ask the devotees ask your guru to forgive you and promise them that now you will be strict follow all the rules and regulations the do's as well as the don'ts and now be very strict. be sincere nothing else is required this exemplifies the self sufficiency of devotional service it is not dependent on any kind of a karma kand or the gyana kand just proper faith prove dijiye prabhu ji yes i am going to give you the proof again not me it's been given by shrila rupa goswami ji already sanatan goswami ji already it is also given by prabhupad ji already i am just making it converting into a presentation and i have shared the content of the book as well as usual so i am requesting that all of you please read the book as well i am hopeful that you have already completed the four chapters reading by now because today we are finishing fifth chapter and we will be continuing with the next chapter tomorrow on so let us see the shastrik confirmation most important confirmation from the 11th canto 21st verse a uh, chapter second verse which says the only qualification for devotional service is to engage in devotional service as outlined by acharya and in order to qualify for bhakti one takes to bhakti it is self sufficient dekho to do bhakti you start bhakti and you if you are to start bhakti you have to do bhakti so whatever acharyas have highlighted whatever instructions they have given we just have to follow them and we are very lucky shri prabhu pad has made this so easy for all of us you know just think if you were in sati yuga then the sati yuga mandated that you do tapa For thousands and thousands of years, you have seen how the tapis used to stand on one leg, sometimes on the thumb of the leg, for thousands of years. 
just praying. And then somewhere they used to get the benefit of Lord. Then as soon as from Satya Yuga, we went to Treta, Vapar Yuga, Treta Yuga, and then Kali Yuga. So our capacity started reducing. But then Lord is wonderful and He is very merciful, most merciful. So what He said, I'll make the path easier for you. So instead of tapa, then came the sacrifices. That okay, you do this kind of a yajna, that kind of a yajna. But if the pronunciation goes wrong, the yajnas are useless. So again, that is not possible in the latest yugas. So then Lord said, okay, you do different kinds of ratas. And then different kinds of ratas. But again, now, we have become so dumb, so difficult. Our lifespan has reduced. So even those results will not come. So what Krishna said, don't worry. Kali Yuge, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Eva Kevlam, Kalau Nasteva 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 Gati so simple. Just take Hari's name. Because Kali Yuge Krishna Nama Krishna Avatar. Krishna has incarnated in the form of his name, Krishna. And we just have to do Krishna Sankirtan. And everything will be achieved. So much easy. That is what the Acharyas have highlighted to us. That we follow these rituals proper. Some people say no, not only orders of Acharya, you have to follow Varnashram Dharma. But again, that is derided. That is not required. So if you see the chapter in detail, you will find there are evidences why it is not required. So it starts off that it is said that prior to embarking on real self-realization, we should execute our duties properly. Then we can successfully take the path of self-realization. But that is general rule. It does not apply at all to pure devotional service. In fact, pure devotional service takes us immediately to the platform of surrenderance to Lord as his eternal servant. So the gradual elevation which is expected by following the Varnashtama Dharma is not required. It is obsolete at all. Prabhuji, you said, what is the evidence? Don't worry. There is evidence in this chapter. What are the evidence? Bhagavata Magya. First canto, fifth chapter, 17th verse. What does it say? Devotional service independently, just understand, independently accomplishes the purification achieved through Varnashram Dharma. Therefore, even if one does not execute his specific occupational duty, but immediately takes direct shelter of the lotus feet of Hare, that is Krishna, there will be no fault on his part. And in all circumstances, his position is secured. What is required? It's so merciful. Just take shelter of Krishna and everything will be done. One more evidence. In fifth canto now, because here Rishab Dev, when he is explaining everything to his sons, Rishabdev is also an incarnation of Lord. He says, persons engaged in fruitive activities are repeatedly accepting birth and death. And until they develop a loving feeling for Vasudev, there will be no question of getting out of these laws of material nature. So just see. Even if you are doing any pious fruitive activity, you will still be getting repeatedly birth and death. What is required is loving feeling for Vasudev. That is the son of Vasudev. That is Krishna. So the moment you take shelter of his lotus feet, will be getting away from the laws of material nature. So 
any person who is seriously engaged in occupational duties and who does not develop for a love for supreme personality of godhead he should be simply understood to be spoiling his human form of life i am very confident that none of you including myself want to waste this human form of life and hence we are not going to be binding ourselves to our occupational duties duties in various varnashramas dhar varnas will directly take shelter of krishna and do whatever pleases krishna so that we achieve the objective of human life coming to 11th canto 11th chapter 32nd verse lord says to uddhava my dear uddhav any person who takes shelter of me in complete surrender and follows my instructions giving up all occupational duties is to be considered the first class man if you remember we had seen this when we were trying to understand who is the uttam adhikari so here krishna has clearly mentioned what does he want he just wants people to surrender to him and take his shelter follow his instructions no more arnashrama duties required the moment we do we are uttama adhikari the first class man so in this statement of the supreme personality godhead we understand the complete essence we clearly understand that people who are generally attracted to the philanthropist for ethical moral altruistic political social welfare activities they can only be good men nice men according to the material calculations but bhagavatam and other authentic vedic scriptures we learn that if person simply acts in krishna consciousness and discharges devotional service he is far far better situated that all of these persons engaged in this social welfare philanthropic ethical moral altruistic activity so we don't need to take to we just have to take to krishna and his service 11th canto 5th chapter 41st verse garbhajan muni addresses maharaj nimi as follows my dear king if someone gives up his occupational duties as they are prescribed for different varnas and ashramas but takes complete shelter surrendering himself unto the lotus feet of the lord such person is no more a debtor nor has he any obligation to perform the different kinds of activities we render to the great sages and sisters living entities and family and society members nor has he any need to bother executing the few kinds of yagyas for becoming free from sinful contamination simply by discharging devotional service he is freed from all kinds of obligations obligations what is obligations i don't have any obligations i am self sufficient i am earning very i have not taken a single paisa loan any time any of us we think like that, but no that is completely wrong in fact it is said as soon as you are born you are obliged you are obligated you are having a debt it is said that if you go through that purport of this particular verse as soon as we take any birth we are indebted to many many sources very first is to the great sages because by reading whatever they have written in the authority to scriptures and books we get the profit the best example is vyasadev now vyasadev ji he wrote so many literature he understood what the future is going to be so he documented everything and today we are getting the benefit of that documentation So we are indebted to him. Why only we ask them? All other munis like Shankaracharya and others. Similarly, we are obliged to our forefathers also. We take birth in a particular family, and we get the advantage of the family. We enjoy their property as well. So it's not that we are creating something. We are getting it right. So we are obliged to our forefathers as soon as we are. Born. Similarly, we are. obliged to people also in general 
her relatives friends even to animals such as cows and dogs because they render us so much service so it is said that it is our duty to repay them all by proper discharge of service we are completely indebted and unless we take to devotional service we cannot get out of this realm or this debt so as soon as we take devotional service one stroke sub loans khatam all loans vanished we give up all obligations and simply surrender to supreme personality of godhead then we are no longer a debtor nor obliged to any other source of it was in krishna is the master of everyone isha vasya midam sarvam so anyone who has given any kind of a debt he has given it for krishna so we have surrendered to krishna so everything belongs to krishna so are we going to be indebted to anyone no we are children of the richest person of this whole creation which is krishna so the moment we give ourselves up to him we take his shelter we are no longer required to be worried about anything else and this is something which is proven in other scriptures also so where does it else comes it also comes in bhagavad gita सर्वधर्मान परित्यज्य मामेकम शरणम व्रज अहम तम सर्व पापे व्यो मोक्ष इष्यामी आशुच सो वी मे थिंक दैट वी आर सरेंडरिंग अनटू द गॉड हेड विल नॉट बी एबल टू परफॉर्म अदर ऑब्लिगेशंस नो लॉर्ड सेज डोंट हेजिटेट डोंट कंसीडर दैट बिकॉज़ यू आर गिविंग अप एंगेजमेंट्स यू विल हैव सम फ्लॉ इन योर लाइफ नो डोंट थिंक आई विल गिव यू प्रोटेक्शन रामचंद्र of lord ramachandra and krishna are liberated right immediately at start so we don't need to follow all regulative principles mentioned in the ritualistic portions of vedic literature so this is the whole sara of this particular chapter if you see Garbhajan Muni also addresses King Nemi. So he says, if we have given up the worship of Devi Gods and has completely concentrated our energy to devotional service of God, then we become very very dear to Lord. So if by chance we make any mistake which is forbidden, we don't need to perform any purification ceremonies because there is Paramatma with us. It takes compassion for our accidental mistakes. and correct that from within in bhagavad gita also it is confirmed in many places that krishna takes special interest in his devotees and declares emphatically that nothing can cause his devotees to fall down that is a promise of krishna he has promised us that we will not have a fall down at all so let us take to this bhakti properly it is most pure as has been proven in this fifth chapter